As you can see, uh, I'm uh, the UNESCO Chair in Communication for Sustainable Social Change. And uh, mm -hmm. that brings uh, a lot of uh, privileges and uh, at the same time also demands uh, a little bit from uh, UNESCO. There are about 30 UNESCO Chairs in the world. Uh, I'm one of the three or four uh, in, uh, at that time in, in the US. Uh, now having moved to Hong Kong, I can continue doing that, but only for a limited period of time. But my focus is on sustainability and communication. And um, we, as part of our network, uh, which is uh, organized through uh, what they call Orbicom, which is uh, based in Montreal, Canada, um, we uh, normally uh, have uh, annual meetings and then discuss uh, research projects and etc. And so one of the research projects, and, and in fact it's more than just a research project, it, it was also uh, aimed at and it is still being aimed at, at policy uh, implementation and, and, and advocacy. Uh, we uh, uh, went for a very broad title, uh, what are the imperatives of sustainable of a sustainable future, but also what is the role of communication in all of this. And so over the past five years, we've held uh, conferences and meetings uh, in different parts of the world, uh, including Thailand uh, in 2000. Uh, 11, we had a, a rather a large conference in, in Bangkok and, and now we are reaching the, the point of uh, summarizing all these exercises and, and we are producing different types of outlets, uh, academic articles, uh, books, uh, but also uh, we aim to influence policymakers and policymakers at uh, all levels of uh, the world, uh, UN agencies, World Bank, uh, uh, national uh, organizations, uh, both uh, governments but also uh, NGOs and uh, bilateral agencies as they are called. Uh, uh, in, in the US uh, uh, I worked with USAID uh, to name one. So um, that also flavors, so to speak, uh, the way I approach these kind of issues. Although I come from an academic uh, background, I uh, thing that uh, you need to serve society at large and so you have also other things to do than just being a good academic. And, and in the perspective I try to advocate for, uh, that perspective is also very normative. So it's not that uh, uh, we continue making the claim that uh, science is something uh, uh, which is neutral or uh, uh, removed from uh, all the dirty politics uh, in societal uh, discussions. Uh, we think there is a, a place for a contribution from a scientific perspective, but that definitely is also uh, normative rather than objective, as the term is uh, in the traditional sense of the word. Um, at the same time, as I already said, uh, we uh, try to influence society. So uh, we don't want to uh, take from an academic perspective what is considered to be the traditional approach towards uh, anthropology. It's observing what's going on, etc. We want to change. We want to intervene and, and contribute to change. But that from a, what we could call an indigenous perspective. So. Uh, you can call it also a bottom-up perspective. Uh, it's not that we uh, want to intervene and, and from a top-down perspective and then uh, tell other people what uh, has to uh, change. Uh, we want to do that with uh, the communities involved. So it's much more a horizontal and a, and a top-down approach than a top-down uh, and top, uh, bottom-up approach rather than a top-down uh, and, and hierarchical approach, although sometimes those things uh, uh, interfere and, and, and mix. Now, um, one thing uh, we, we, we brought to uh, uh, the conference here is an, uh, an article uh, Pat and, and I wrote together on uh, advocacy communication for peace building. Uh, because looking at, at your websites and, and the introductory material at the beginning of uh, the conference, we thought that uh, the issues would go in the direction of peace and conflict resolution, etc. So we, we brought this uh, paper for everybody to, uh, uh, to have a look at, uh, uh, but I'm not going to discuss this uh, now, it's uh, just uh, for your information. But it's another example of, uh, 
of uh, uh, our way of contributing to uh, to a, a problem in society and and looking at it from a more academic perspective. Uh, we've also worked in that area, so we uh, we, we try to uh, systematize the, the literature and, and the perspectives, and then uh, give that uh, as food for thought for. Uh, uh, discussions among the, the groups concerned. Okay, let me start, uh, and, and, and my presentation today is rather broad and, and rather, rather general, uh, and, and if you uh, feel like uh, interrupting me and, and asking additional questions, feel free to do so. So, uh, as you can see, we start from a rather broad perspective, just identifying uh, problems in today's world, uh, and I hope I didn't miss out on some, but uh, I'm sure you can identify some more problems in, in the world. What we try to do is that, that to identify those problems from different perspectives. Some of them are uh, uh, current and uh, ad hoc and uh, uh, determined by na nature, by natural events, but many of the problems today are human-made. Uh, whether we uh, at, at, uh, agree to it or not. Uh, so we, um, we think that all these problems, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, be a concerned citizen in today's world uh, and an academic, as I said, you uh, uh, need to connect these problems with what you're doing or, or vice versa. And so uh, in our meetings and, and discussions, we normally start from one of those uh, Problems and then see what the role and place of communication could be. Right. There's one that I would add, and that's the great extinction that's going on at the moment the destruction of the ecology and the destruction of the planet Earth's uh, natural systems. Yeah, that's captured under climate change, but uh, yeah, it may uh, be further developed in other uh, areas, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our latest book, which I uh, circulated yesterday, is, is precisely on, on those issues. Okay, so um, the starting point then is uh, how can we build up a consensus for change, uh, realizing that uh, most of the strategies of the past haven't uh, functioned properly or uh, is definitely in need of some uh, amendments and, and change. Uh, and, and, some, and, and of course for communication we identified some of those traditional uh, approaches like agricultural extension, social mobilization community participation, uh, etc. So uh, the concluding uh, uh, f uh, conclusion of, of, of this uh, first sheet is uh, we, some of us may have ideas about appropriate strategies, but we haven't really reached the point that we all look in the same direction and we uh, master those strategies in a proficient way. Um, so uh, then you can ask uh, what is the best way forward and of course we are all familiar with concepts like sustainable development so here uh, is the, the broad summary of the Brundtland report. Uh, sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present uh, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs and that normally can be split in three different directions. Sometimes uh, there is a fourth one uh, overlaying these three di uh, directions added to it and that's a cultural identity issue. So, but uh, basically it's economic, it's environmental, <coughs> and uh, social, cultural, uh, and everything that comes with it. We, in our own work, uh, uh, we have been looking around for uh, more uh, flavors to that discussion than only a Western flavor, although we don't intend to say that Brundtland uh, and, and everything which uh, comes with the traditional approach to sustainable development is only Western, but there are uh, elements which uh, may uh, 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 give that kind of impression. So in the Thai context, for instance, uh, you can add uh, the uh, perspectives presented by Prapa uh, Yuto uh, or Sumak Sivaraksa, uh, two well-known uh, uh, philosophers, uh, not really uh, academics, but social activists in, in this country. And, and the perspective from uh, by Pajuto in, in itself is quite interesting because he adds to the discussion on uh, sustainable development also the element, the third component of evolvability. 
and that's uh, the potential of human beings to develop themselves into less selfish persons, which in fact is in, uh, a challenge for all of us and uh, will have uh, important implications for uh, the kind of uh, policy or the kind of uh, proposals we make. So his argument is that the Western concept of sustainable development is in fact at the dead end uh, perspective because it requires some of us to compromise, to uh, adjust to something which is determined by others. Well, if you uh, cons uh, take the concept of evolvability, it has to be chaired and, and maybe also negotiated, but the, slot, the, the, the final uh, outcome uh, has to be uh, agreed upon in a more balanced democratic way. Um, so, uh, concluding that uh, those, those different perspectives, uh, in my own work, uh, I've uh, made the argument that there is not such thing like a universal development model, so let's forget about uh, modernization, which is a Western concept, or uh, dependency, which, is, uh, which was presented as a third world uh, uh, alternative. Uh, in my own work, I call it multiplicity, but uh, it comes under different other names. But, uh, Multiplicity is, is one of the concepts I use in, in my uh, uh, work on communication and development. But uh, so we here the, the most important thing to uh, look at is that development is an integral, multidimensional dialectic process that differs from society to society, community to community, and context to context. So um, along that kind of train of thoughts, uh, we, we can already identify that it has to come from a more indigenous perspective, bottom-up, community-based, uh, multi-stakeholder, because you need to work with different uh, uh, communities or, or uh, power brokers involved in, in, in these uh, discussions, etc., etc. Um, and and we are aligning ourselves, or we we found our fellow travelers, so to speak, and uh, the latest contribution in that direction is the. UNDP uh, Human Development Report of 2013, which for the first time in a rather well-documented uh, uh, fashion uh, documents uh, the new changes taking place in the world. Uh, the subtitle, The Rise of the South, is quite uh, indicative. Uh, they also identify four uh, specific areas for sustaining um, a, a, a future and uh, enhancing equity. Uh, is, is one of them, uh, not only on the gender level, but in, uh, but, uh, in all the, uh, the different dimensions. Participation of citizens, uh, including uh, youth, I would, and, and I, in, in the discussions we had, we also include seniors um, in, in some parts of the world. Of course, seniority comes with respect and etc., but in other parts of the world, seniority is. Uh, used to waste or uh, uh, redundancy, so we would like to go for a more balanced uh, perspective on uh, the role citizens can play. Environmental pressures, of course, and managing demographic change, uh, those are more applied uh, uh, elements which uh, in the report are further developed. So, in, in a more narrative way, uh, they then um, document the, the rise of the South by looking at uh, countries, uh, Brazil, China, and India, nowadays also the the BRICS. They have uh, uh, acquired uh, a similar level of uh, economic growth uh, by certain standards. So uh, those are indications of, of, of changes and rebalancing of uh, um, the world economy and, and world power. Uh, middle class in the south, uh, when you look around, you, you start noticing those things. Uh, and middle class in the South also includes the smaller countries, no longer the major uh, countries uh, are uh, developing in, in those directions. It's uh, a, a trend which is observable in many economies. But then uh, in the concluding part of the whole document, they say, unless people can participate meaningfully in the events and process that shape their lives, national human development paths will be neither desirable nor sustainable. So economy and uh, even uh, taking care of uh, environmental and uh, 
and all these issues is not uh, enough to uh, acquire and, and reach a more sustainable uh, human development level. And then lastly, uh, and I meant to say that uh, during the presentation of uh, We Women the other day, uh, if they are looking for quotes, uh, this is another quote to uh, uh, highlight the importance of uh, women in uh, uh, these uh, processes. Uh, Educating women through adulthood is the closest thing to a silver bullet formula for accelerating human development. Uh, that's uh, not the first time that this is being mentioned, but it is uh, once more a confirmation of many things which uh, are looking at, it, at these things in, in, in conjunctual uh, ways. Okay, all of this is, is more or less related to what you would call the broader field of development. So uh, I would like now to move into the direction of what is the role of communication in all of this. Because traditionally communication uh, has always been looked at in a very instrumentalistic way. Uh, it's uh, a sender sending messages to a receiver through different media, uh, using different techniques, etc. Uh, that is what is called in the uh, communication literature, the diffusion of innovations, diffusion ideas, creating them by professionals, uh, journalists or uh, people who uh, are uh, having the so-called acquired uh, professional skills, etc. Uh, there is still a need for those uh, approaches and social marketing and, and, and journalism definitely work in that direction, but uh, we argue that you also look, have to look at it from the other side, from what is needed and what uh, can be achieved at the, at the target groups levels, the, the users, the audience of uh, uh, communication products. And uh, if you start at that end, you may uh, identify other needs and other ways of, of uh, handling communication. Uh, and therefore, Three um, major themes, guiding principles, uh, facilitating participation, which is uh, not typical for communication, but of course communication uh, having implicitly um, in its uh, way of uh, operating the element of dialogue, of, of, of uh, engaging uh, people in certain things. Making information understandable and meaningful, that's more than what uh, journalism is about, uh, uh, and especially the, the, the bad uh, examples of uh, journalism these days. And fostering policy acceptance, uh, once again, because uh, we think that we should also contribute to uh, society in more than just uh, academic ways. Um, so here you have a, a selection of different uh, uh, elements, uh, examples uh, to uh, identify the need uh, or the role communication uh, can play in, in the broader area of uh, uh, and complexity of uh, development uh, related issues. Uh, this is, is an, another way of summarizing this more from an, from a an, uh, communication perspective. Uh, we did um, a rather in-depth analysis of, of what's available in the field. So we uh, looked at what uh, agencies are doing, UN agencies, governmental agencies, NGOs, uh, what you find in the literature, theories, etc. And uh, we came up for this particular area with uh, about 40, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, different approaches. And, and in our own work, we identify these and we uh, uh, provide the characteristics and uh, the strengths and weaknesses of each uh, particular area. The, the top uh, uh, approaches are what we could call the more traditional approaches, which are uh, basically top-down, uh, the, the ones initiated by established uh, agencies. And they use a technique uh, which is uh, yeah, one, one way, uh, flow, uh, etc. While the, the bottom uh, Examples, uh, HIV-AIDS community approach, also promoted by uh, the United Nations, Nations AIDS uh, Agency, uh, and, and especially community participation, which is a broader uh, uh, term to identify uh, uh, bottom-up approaches. They, they are uh, on the other uh, level or the other uh, 
side of the continuum, uh, which uh, means uh, they are much more bottom up, while the, the top is more uh, top down, as I, as I already mentioned. Now, for each particular approach which you find in the literature, you, you may, uh, if you look at each particular approach in detail, you may find that uh, often it's a mix of different approaches. And that's because uh, reality and, and the practice of, of these things doesn't function along the expectations or assumptions of scientific, epistemological and, 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 and methodological scrutiny. So what you often uh, find are uh, mixtures, the, the mix of, for instance, diffusionist approaches, which are top-down, and then participatory approaches. And when you uh, question the, the people involved and doing the work, they will say, yes, but that's the only way it works, without even uh, acknowledging that, in fact, they are contradictory in terms. Uh, but so that's uh, how uh, the practice of, uh, operates. It's, it's not uh, uh, always following uh, theoretical, uh, ideal, typical uh, formulations. Now, a, 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 a third or a fourth way of categorizing all of this is by looking at the, the communication tools involved. And uh, again, adopting and using some of the, the concepts uh, available in, in this uh, literature. Uh, often, uh, when you start uh, reading around, you'll come across the concept of behavioral change communication. People uh, need to be aware of things, then they need to change their attitude towards things, their value system, and then eventually you need to be, uh, encourage them to change their behavior, and that first at an individual level and then at a more societal level. So that's a very linear approach to a change and communication plays a role at all these different levels. That's the most common and most uh, uh, developed uh, uh, approach in the field of communication. If you uh, take an uh, introductory text, you'll find these things uh, quite obvious. But in our own work and uh, together with others... Uh, May I just uh, yeah. interrupt you? Uh, are we getting too hot? I switched mm -hmm. off the air condition. Yes. <coughs> Is yes, it okay? Do yeah. you have to speak a bit louder? Okay. okay. Uh, you can just open the windows. No, that doesn't no, work. No, no. That doesn't work? No, oh, it's no, hotter. No. no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it feels cool outside. <laughs> Uh, I was in Austria and it was 40 degrees centigrade. And the Austrians were saying, quick, shut the windows, shut the windows, we're open them, and it's getting too hot inside. 10 minutes ago. Okay, so I'll, I'll try to. Uh, so, uh, five approaches behavioral change communication. Mass communication is the traditional approach where uh, a lot of. Uh, media, mass media especially, and nowadays more and more new technologies, new media, social networks are being used. Advocacy communication is a combination of these two, uh, with a twist, because there is the element of uh, policy uh, implementation involved. In our own work, we advocate for participatory communication, for community mobilization, and then fifthly, communication for structural change. And our argument is that uh, while these first two or three approaches, they can be useful in themselves, uh, they can lead to certain outcomes, they are not going to reach the level of sustainability on the long term if you don't do it in a, strict, in a, in a, in a holistic, integrated way. And here are some of the uh, aspects which need to be taken into account as well, and that's probably for some of us uh, uh, saying that this needs a more anthropological uh, perspective and uh, I fully agree with that. It, it needs to be a contextual analysis where communication is positioned uh, as one of the essential ways of making the change, but uh, you can't do one without the other, so to speak. Uh, and, and in the policy world, of course, that leads them to discussions on running development goals. Uh, which will soon be reframed uh, and named uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, that's for next year. So um, this is another way of uh, saying the same. Challenges for the future. Uh, again, this is trying to summarize these things. 
there are some uh, challenges which uh, go back again to the, today's problems and to and to the most essential issues of today's society, environmental, uh, food security, the issue of equity, empowerment of women, girls and senior citizens, also technological issues, narrowing the digital divide. Um, personally, I think, uh, again, but that leads, uh, leads into another discussion. Uh, most of the discussions these days are only talking about access, and access is, is uh, typical neoliberal uh, way of looking at digital divide because it sells products. It's not uh, inviting people to participate. For participation you also need education, you need to competencies, you need to, uh, skills, training, etc. And the right to communicate uh, for those uh, interested in philosophy. Um, uh, we come a long way from the whole discussion on uh, freedom of the press and freedom issues. Uh, uh, it reached a point that's one time in the 80s that one said, okay, freedom is okay, but it has to be responsible, it has to be equitable, it has to be balanced. Uh, nowadays, uh, one says, okay, all these things are important, but you need to turn it around and start at the other end where the people concerned are uh, expressing their needs, and that's their right to know, their right to communicate. Again, that can lead into discussions on uh, what Snowden has brought to the table, and uh, what uh, the American uh, are still uh, uh, calling him uh, a traitor and a terrorist for, but that's another relevant discussion. So, um, in conclusion, uh, one of the two recent books uh, which are documenting and, and further developing this uh, are these two, uh, Sustainable Development Green Communication. Uh, it's a compilation of different contributions from an African and Asian perspective and uh, the one sustainable participation in culture and communication is uh, a more theoretical one which also uh, highlights and tries to uh, prioritize three concepts from a communication perspective sustainability participation and culture and uh, uh, that wants me to uh, uh, promote a conference we are organizing in august in uh, bangkok uh, where some and of not, if not most of these discussion, uh, discussions will also be um, uh, invited and, and take place. So if you're interested, I can send you links to. Uh, well, tell us now where. I mean, yeah. the it's, dates. It's uh, in Bangkok from the 15th to the 17th of August, and it's uh, uh, organized by a group of uh, universities from China, from Taiwan, we in uh, Hong Kong, uh, Mahidol University uh, here in Thailand. It's uh, um, held on the uh, uh, Mahidon uh, campus in Bangkok. International College. Mahidon International College in Bangkok, Saraya. Uh. Saraya in Mahatong. Okay, so I'll, I'll share the, the links uh, later. Okay, thank you, and uh, I'm sure you have questions. According to my clock, four minutes to ten, is that uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if we say that we have uh, still uh, until 12 o'clock until lunch, um, then we have still two presentations. So until 10 o'clock we have four minutes now, and then perhaps a little pause, and then uh, we, we go into the next presentation. Would that be okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need some more time for questions because we started at quarter past. Yes, so we past. should not cut, let him pay the price for that. Yes, you're right. At so least I have a question. Yes. Or I have come. May I? Mm, you talked about the millennium, the United Nations millennium. And then they're one of the, uh, it's uh, empowering women. It's only that um, we, just before I left, we had a huge conference about just these eight items for the millennium, next <coughs> millennium. And uh, it was the women's organizations that was asked to give recommendations for the committee that's going to United Nations. And they, I think they are there now. Um, well, the first we put up is new. And that is that violence is not one of the items for this millennium. Goals. And we say that violence against women and girls 
a serious obstacle for the fulfillment of all the uh, other eight millennium development goals. Because violence against women and girls is so severe today. Home violence, violence uh, everywhere, is really an obstacle that these goals can be fulfilled. And if we don't put on violence as one of the main goals, especially against women and girls, we will never manage to fulfill the other ones. Empower women is impossible as long as so much violence is going on. Because the clever girls, the ones that go to, to um, university, whatever, in some of the countries, they will be killed. And we will see that on the next, on the film from Manas. The, the ones that dare to stay up, they will either be suppressed by their family, they even can be killed, as we will see in the Banas film. And that is in so many countries today. So if you don't put a wireless as one of the main goals in the next 15 years, then empowering women will, will be impossible. And besides, that's another goal that's missing, and that's peace. To convert the extreme masculine war culture to a more feminine and, um, shall we say, empathic peace culture. That is to put up the role of men, and I don't, the, the masculine values, not men, but the masculine values, as one of them, shall we say, also the goals, to convert the mask, these very harsh masculine values, that is suppression, that is to go to war to solve conflicts, that has to be, that has to be viewed in some way. If not, we, we have to go from a war culture to a peace culture. And maybe you know Ingeborg Brainess that's worked for this in UNESCO for many, many years. The peace culture. That's a more empathic, empathic culture of living. Yeah, I don't have an issue with anything you said, but uh, you sh uh, I think uh, Millennium Development Goals, of course, they came out of a totally different uh, approach and a different discussion. Uh, I'm not uh, defending uh, any of them. Uh, I think that they are basically a top-down approach to uh, uh, certain uh, criteria set by governments, uh, and it's what they what we call an engineering approach to uh, changing uh, certain aspects of uh, societal uh, uh, life and, uh, and interaction. Uh, but you don't have to uh, expect everything from uh, any kind of uh, 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 statement by the UN or other uh, agencies uh, either. So uh, in, in the context, they, they, they were promoted and they were uh, identified uh, at the uh, late uh, time of, of the past uh, uh, millennium. Uh, it was just something which uh, was the brainchild of uh, Kofi Annan, uh, uh, his uh, go away gift to the world, so to speak, mm -hmm. and it was pretty poorly and in a haphazard way composed. If you look at the eight uh, Millennium Development Goals, so some of them they are achievable, they have set uh, quantifiable uh, indicators, mm -hmm. others are just uh, uh, yeah, uh, statements uh, which will never. Uh, be uh, uh, accomplished, like uh, international partnerships. Uh, yeah, everybody tries to uh, and, and tries to uh, accomplish some of that kind of collaboration. But uh, when uh, is the time that you can say now we have achieved this? So, uh, as part of the current discussions uh, along those lines, one is trying to become much more concrete, much more uh, based on set targets and set objectives, and that in, a, in itself may well be an, Im an improvement uh, regarding the, the, the previous set of goals, but they will never be 
uh, in line with what you try to advocate, uh, because that's not the, the nature of uh, how these things come about and how these things are being uh, negotiated by the world society of, of, of governments and, and policy uh, uh, makers, so to speak. Uh, I think it's a task of the civil society to continue hammering on issues like violence and, and empowerment, but uh, you have to be realistic, at least that's my position, you have to be realistic and, and, and try to negotiate that in a multi-stakeholder environment, uh, even with people you tend to dislike, so to speak, politically or otherwise. I agree fully with you. It's only that um, our delegation, that is a mixed uh, official and uh, NGO delegation, we have quite many NGOs from the civil, civil society, they will hammer on this, that the other goals, they cannot be obtained if the violence is not stopped. So violence today, and it's not only for girls and, and women, it's all over, it's all over, so much violence, and really, you had it also, you had war and you had um, mm, genocides. If, if that's not wished, we, we cannot obtain the other ones. That's our, that's our goal. It, we are realistic. That's just what we are. We are realistic, saying that the violence is really an obstacle for the other, all the other goals. There has been obtained a lot. The eight goals are they are very good, but I think they are set up by men and not by women. Many of them. There are not women among the ones that putting up these goals, there because then involved. peace and violence would be one of the items. But it's not yet. But we hope to get it during the next 15 years. At least we will work for it. Could I ask a question? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, thank you for the presentation. I think uh, it's important, of course, to separate uh, rhetoric from reality. And you mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned, uh, working with the uh, uh, U.S. Agency for International Development and, uh, and the World Bank, and I want to ask you a question about that uh, after my comment. But um, uh, if we look at the U.S. Agency for International Development or World Bank or Regional Development, uh, Asian Development Banks, etc. They've uh, uh, adopted, the red, uh, adopted the practices of uh, sustainable development agencies, uh, alternative uh, development agencies at the grassroots level, such as Oxfam is one example. And so they're very good at using uh, the language uh, that has been used by these NGOs and grassroots based organizations, talking about women's empowerment, talking about ending violence. Uh, uh, they, they changed the uh, name of uh, what the structure they used to call it the structural adjustment program IMF changed it to enhanced structural adjustment program now they call it the poverty reduction and growth enhancement S sustainability type of program you know, so uh, they're very good at using rhetoric and you know uh, uh, they, they they talk about the bottom up approach uh, instead of instead of the top top down approach they they also talk about uh, environmental sustainability using natural resources small scale as opposed to large scale labor intensive instead of capital intensive. And so the question uh, I want to ask to ask you is uh, how much influence do you have as one of the chairs in the UNESCO, what was it, the uh, Center for Sustainable Development, uh, uh, when you talk with people at USAID uh, AID or, or, or the World Bank. I mean, there have been applied anthropologists who have gone into these organizations hoping to have some influence, and they were told that they would have some influence and they would want to have their, uh, their input on how these types of development projects are going to affect local women or, or, or tribal communities or, or local farming communities. Uh, and, and come to find out that, uh, yeah, they, they took their paper they, and, and just threw it in a trash can. So I'm wondering how much uh, influence do you think, or an impact, if you have any, uh, on, on these agencies? Okay. Um, in general, I chair your concerns, and I uh, think that I'm looking at these things in a similar, some may say cynical, others may say realistic way. Um, I personally have never uh, uh, 
been willing to join uh, these agencies for the, for similar reasons. Uh, so I want to stay at the level of academic uh, perspectives and, and contribute wherever I can. But uh, of course now I have to be, become a bit more personal. Uh, I uh, can give you two examples uh, which I thought were uh, interesting and which have been been a bit productive, but of course not productive in the sense that they were successful in all the aspects you might uh, have worked for. Uh, I was the uh, chair of the uh, scientific committee for the uh, first and never uh, since uh, a World Congress on Development Communication, which uh, was uh, organized by the World Bank, uh, FAO and uh, uh, Communication Initiative, which is in the uh, coalition of uh, NGOs, so most of them for-profit NGOs, uh, in, in the world. Uh, of course, many of these uh, NGOs are based in the Western, uh, especially the US world. Um, as the chair of that uh, scientific committee, we were uh, instrumental and influential in the sense that we were given the liberty to uh, 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 peer review the submission of the papers. And uh, we, uh, we also uh, prioritized the, the, the relevance of uh, many of these papers from a uh, certain uh, academic perspective, but also, of course, as I tried to emphasize, policy perspective. So uh, there was uh, a negotiated kind of compromise uh, involved. But okay, uh, the World Bank and, and these top level institutions being what they are, uh, once we were uh, almost finished with our academic contributions, then the politicians took over and they start manipulating uh, the selection of the, of the papers. They wanted to uh, identify other papers to be uh, promoted as keynotes, etc. And at that level, yeah, then you can say, okay, I'm still willing to play the game and I'm uh, willing to uh, officially present this as the uh, academic outcome. Or you can say, okay, now I disappear in the background and uh, inform those who are uh, there to ask uh, what uh, has happened. And that's what I did. So uh, during the conference, it became abundantly clear that this was uh, an academic exercise taken over by politicians. And, and that has uh, stayed in the memory of those involved. It was, after all, a, a rather major uh, conference of six, seven hundred people uh, focusing on this, uh, with both academics and politicians in, in the, the game. But the reason why it has never been duplicated has to do with the fact that uh, the World Bank was afterwards uh, severely critiqued for this kind of approach because they lost the, the, the support of a, a lot of uh, academics as a result. Now another example, uh, you, you've mentioned USAID. Uh, uh, I've uh, been working with USAID on my own terms. Uh, when I sign a contract with USAID, I want to have complete uh, uh, liberty to uh, decide what I do and, and how I do it. And uh, uh, USAID as, a, as an organization doesn't allow that. But you can do that through local uh, counter uh, parts of USA. So, for instance, in Guatemala, which is not an easy country to work with, which has a, a, a history of violence, it has a history of human rights abuses. But uh, uh, the local uh, uh, team of USA uh, has a, a, yeah, more. Uh, other objectives than, than what uh, the main office in D.C. is, uh, is about. Um, and, and so at the local level, we were, we were able to uh, uh, do a lot of things, even propose uh, an, a, a change in the uh, educational policies from secondary school upwards for the whole uh, country of Guatemala, but endorsed by the minister. And, and that uh, is something you cannot achieve if you don't play these kind of uh, sometimes very sensitive games. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that is... Uh, no, that is a uh, yeah, yeah, very uh, informative response because I think uh, you're, you're basically saying in, in, in some respects your hands are tied uh, and others, of course, you have to compromise. You have to be very diplomat diplomatic in the language you use and the proposal, proposals you submit for participation in these agencies. You have to look overlook the fact, for example, that USAID uh, 
is involved in intelligence gathering agencies. The CIA is involved. Uh, there's a, a subversion of, of, of labor unions uh, and 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 and, and, and uh, su uh, support for military dictatorships, etc., etc., etc. If you ask me, yeah. I'll tell you. Right. But, uh, I'm not the one who is representing USAID. Right, right. So, but, but you're a United, United Nations right. Chair for Sustainable Development, trying to get in with USAID and working on sustainable development mm -hmm. issues. So I applaud you for that. Yeah. Uh, and and the other question is really uh, is do, can I ask one quick uh, mm -hmm. a quicker question? Uh, and <laughs> Halfway through your first yeah, question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, because I know we're, uh, the time is limited, but uh, it's, it's dealing with the, the, the sustainable your your notion of sustainable uh, communication, or for social for progressive social change or something like that, right? Uh, and um, and you mentioned uh, Snowden um, and. Um, I read a report, and, and this is not my area of uh, expertise by any means, but I just read a report uh, from one of the listservs I was on last year, um, and they mentioned that um, uh, uh, the Israeli military, uh, as well as other militaries, U.S. militaries, uh, intelligence agencies are using the social networks like Twitter. Uh, they've, cr they've created social personas by the tens of thousands, uh, and they get out there on Twitter and say, uh, oh, we, we should support our government policy, or we should oppose this demonstration because it's being infiltrated by communists or terrorists or whatever. Um, and so what, uh, are, are you addressing that issue as well? I'm following some of that, but I'm definitely not a specialist on these things. Uh, but since... Uh, or can you even touch on those issues? Because you are in the United Nations, and the United Nations is constrained by the power and influence of the United, Nation, uh, United States. I'm an academic and uh, I don't uh, have to follow any kind of uh, uh, rules set by organizations who don't want to use me or hire me, uh, but uh, it normally boils down to more sophisticated discussions than the one you are uh, uh, hinting at now. I, I'm, as I said, I'm not a, a specialist on, on all of this, but I found it uh, interesting to observe. Uh, I arrived in Hong Kong uh, January last year, and in those days, uh, in the public discourse, uh, as you may recall yourself, uh, America was still bashing China for uh, uh, censoring uh, everything, etc. And then Snowden came about, and uh, of course, the Chinese started questioning uh, what are you doing to us uh, while you were at the same time accusing us of these things. And now, it has become apparently, uh, apparently clear that uh, everybody is spying on each other and the sophistication of all of this uh, leads to the conclusion that privacy issues are completely gone. Uh, if we uh, still believe that there is an element of privacy in the world, we are fooling ourselves. Uh, and, and it's not uh, always uh, determined by technological uh, instruments and, and tools, but it, it goes beyond that. Uh, uh, they made a reference to violence and, and, and peace. I think uh, privacy is another issue for the future, which we as a generation may not even be able to keep, uh, encapsulate, uh, conceptualize. And, and when we compare that to the, our, uh, our daughters or our uh, children, they come out of a totally different uh, arena. They don't even uh, have the need to uh, look at it from the same kind of perspective because they give everything away, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's it's that kind of ongoing uh, discussion, and and where it leads to, uh, I don't have a glass ball, so I don't really know. But I'm really I'm pretty concerned about uh, those kind of developments. Yes. Thank you so very very much. Thank you. Uh, I would love to listen. <laughs> I would love to listen to you now. I think we should give you all day. No. <laughs> and by the way, uh, if you're uh, taping these things, uh, I used to have a, uh, an interview show on the local uh, uh, TV uh, station in, in uh, the US. And if you Google me, you can uh, watch some of those. Oh, lovely. Encounter with Jan Zerbaas. Encounter. Oh, very good. Uh, I, I, you know, please give me all the information. I will have one week of post-conference work, okay? So I will now be after the conference. We work for from uh, Monday for one work, one week to 
put everything on the website and so please send me everything because after that I won't have time anymore. Please send me your PowerPoint and if you could send me the links. I also have my program. <laughs> Please, could, could you all the links yeah. so that they are on the website? Is yeah. that okay? Sure. And you have to remember because I don't know. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we have a short break.